This is Euclid Book 11, definition number 14. And we're going to finally deploy my little yellow compass. You see this little yellow compass right here? This end will help us position for the center of any circle or any sphere that we, we intend to draw. And this end will help us draw the outermost edges of any circle or any sphere. That's why we've got this dang thing. You'll recognize this as the dry erase board that we used in Euclid Book 10. Okay, and now we're going to use it for Euclid Book 11. Now you say, well, how does this thing actually work? Well, here's what we're going to do. First of all, you have to take the cap off the dry erase marker, as you can see here. And then we're just going to put this suction cup. See the suction cup right here? We're going to put it right there. And practice does make perfect. Get yourself one of these. I know it's a little awkward to use and it will take a little practice to get it, get it just exactly right, but this makes some pretty awesome circles and spheres. Okay, let's do this. As you can see, the circle is a little rough. Like I said, this is a big awkward device. Okay, now the next thing you want to do as you're doing this is you want to mark the center of this circle. Right like that. And I'll show you why in just a little bit. But anyway, we're now done with this. And all I have to do now, well, we're not quite done with it yet, but we're going to be done in a little bit. I've got the cap to this dry erase marker. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the diameter of this circle, which, believe it or not, is going to end up being a sphere. Now, I know, you, I know what you're going to say. Well, Euclid didn't use rulers. He used straight edges. Well, the only difference between a straight edge and a ruler is that the ruler has numbers and a straight edge does not. That's the only difference. So, oh, Okay, so we're going to use the ruler. I know that the size of the ruler is not the same as the size of the circle. I'm well aware of that. Let's just get this line drawn anyway. Okay. Okay. Now we have the diameter of what's going to become a sphere. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a couple of semicircles on the sphere. This is why we need the radius of the sphere. Because the semicircles are going to start at these two points right here, but they're not going to be the same size as the sphere. And you'll see what I'm talking about in just a moment. Okay, what we need to do is just slightly adjust, like this. Now this by far is not going to be perfect, nor am I going to lie to you and say this is going to be perfect. This is as close as it gets. Okay, so basically what we have is a circle within a circle and by doing so we can actually represent the sphere. Now we're going to go through four, count them four, Euclid definitions. Okay, And the first one is number 14. When the diameter of a semicircle remaining fixed, the semicircle is carried around and restored again to the same position from which it began to be moved, the figure so comprehended as a sphere. This is the semicircle we were talking about, and its diameter is actually the same as the other circle. Okay. Euclid Book 11, definition number 15. The 
axis of the sphere is the straight line which remains fixed and about which the semicircle is turned. Okay, This would be the outermost edge of the sphere. Euclid Book 11 definition number 16 says the center of the sphere is the same as that of the semicircle. Okay, So the, semi, the, the center of this sphere okay, is the same center as the semicircle. Okay? Because you can see there's the sem center of the semicircle and there's the center of the sphere. They're exactly the same. Okay? Euclid Book 11, definition number 17. A diameter of a sphere is any straight line drawn through the center and terminated in both directions by the surface of the sphere. Okay, well here's the diameter of this sphere. It's drawn through the center of the sphere and it terminates at the outermost edges of the sphere. And that is Euclid Book 11, definition number 17. Okay. All right. I will tell you more in a future video, but as you can see here, you can actually draw a sphere. A sphere just looks like a circle. It really does, unless you add all these semicircles go along with it. Okay? And you can do all of this with the same yellow compass that I just used just a minute ago. And now you know how to use it. And this is something we're going to do. We're going to be using equipment like this to draw all this stuff. If you think we, are, we aren't, guess again, we are. Alright! I will tell you more in a future video, so I want you to stay tuned.